Welcome to, uh, to everyone, and thank you for attending this, uh, this event. So I'm Professor Fahim Melgani, I'm the, the Dean for the Undergraduate and Graduate Studies uh, of the Department of Information Engineering and Computer Science, or the DZ Department. So before uh, stepping forward with uh, various presentations which are scheduled in this event, I would like to uh, first emphasize on the fact that if you uh, to, to choose, uh, your, uh, to pursue your master studies in our department, uh, I think that this will be an excellent choice, and this for various uh, reasons. The first one is that the DZ department is one of the best departments here in Italy, but also abroad. Uh, the DZ department uh, is or includes uh, numerous researchers which are at the top level of the world uh, in the world. Uh, three, the DZ department has, uh, let's say, a very long and rich uh, international experience in both incoming and outgoing directions. The DZ department uh, has been developing uh, very tight relationships with industry at both education and research level. And finally, uh, as you will see from the presentations, uh, all our master degrees, uh, they offer content which is uh, in full harmony with respect to what uh, the, the job market is asking for. And this is not a coincidence that 95% uh, of our uh, graduated students succeed in finding a award right after graduating, and even part of them uh, finds a award before graduating. So I will not take uh, more time, but I would like just to remind that uh, uh, for what, what regards the questions and answers. So please raise any doubt you have, any questions you have. There is uh, a question and answer, uh, answer uh, functionality, which is at the bottom of the Zoom window that you may use. And so don't hesitate to use it. So uh, now let's move to uh, the first slot uh, in this event, which is about the master degree in computer science. And this will be uh, presented by my colleague, so Professor Enrico Blanzieri. Please, Enrico. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Melgani. So I will briefly present the structure of the Master of uh, Computer Science uh, that is basically based on, on the fact that uh, we are dealing with, uh, uh, with many areas. Uh, and the point, uh, the main point of the Master is that the student has a, a really uh, a lot of choice. In fact, uh, it's possible to uh, choose uh, um, among more than 17 courses uh, that are all, all offered by faculty with external experts. And uh, in each of these area, you will find at least uh, five, uh, five courses that are, uh, I mean, uh, given by, uh, by experts, in some cases with contribution by, uh, by other departments. And in this way, in this master, you can really choose the kind of uh, uh, specialization that you uh, that you want. Uh, the master is organized in two curricula. The first one is the science and technology that covers these uh, six areas here. And uh, uh, in this case, you have to choose some um, almost mandatory courses that are the ones that are listed below. So you have to choose two between um, three distributed system one, machine learning and service design and engineering. Uh, and uh, uh, there are also courses that are mandatory, that is uh, computability and computational complexity and innovation in business in ICT. Then uh, you, you need to, to, to choose uh, at least uh, 18 credits in one area and at least 18 credits in other areas. Uh, and the area are, are the one that you uh, find here, data science, computational foundation, software and service architectures, bioinformatics, System networks uh, and cybersecurity from uh, from this uh, from this this year. Uh, we also have another um, curriculum uh, that uh, is uh, devoted to uh, to innovation, and uh, in particular case in this case in in this curriculum, the uh, mandatory courses are about innovation and entrepreneurship. And so you have also business development laboratories, ICT innovation courses, and innovation entrepreneurship studies in ICT. And the, uh, the areas in which you can uh, then specialize are the one that you see here, on which you have to take uh, uh, 36 credits. There are data science, financial technologies, embedded systems, 
software and service architecture, cybersecurity, and from the next year, also competitive manufacturing. Uh, moreover, uh, on uh, this uh, curriculum of ICT innovation, there is also the possibility of, uh, of seeing some entry points for the digital master, uh, for the EAT digital master. And so it's possible, also possible to uh, have some uh, local requirement or opportunity. And uh, uh, so uh, overall uh, in our master, we have, you, you can have uh, several options with uh, these two different curriculas. And uh, uh, you, you see the areas can be combined in the two curriculum in this, uh, uh, in this way. Um, uh, eventually in both curricula, uh, you can also choose 24 credits in elective courses. And then there are the last 30 uh, credits are uh, to be done with an internship and 24 credits of, uh, of thesis. Um, some of these uh, areas uh, in, the, in the ICT innovation part uh, serve also as uh, exit points uh, of the AT masters. These are the ones that are listed here. And uh, um, some of them are in the uh, AAT digital master things. And uh, another one is from this year on the um, um, master in manufacturing, that is a different kick in the EAT. Uh, moreover, uh, it's interesting also to know that some of these areas overlap some of the courses with the inter in three inter interdepartmental master programs in data science, bioinformatics, and human computer interaction design. And uh, so this means that if you attend this course, you will have the opportunity to interact with your fellow, fellow colleagues of other uh, of other, um, uh, all other masters. Uh, okay, so this is the general structure. And now uh, we will uh, I mean, I mean, spend time on, uh, um, on, on, on listening to, uh, to, two, to two our colleagues. Uh, the first one will be Professor Bruno Crispo. The second one will be Marco Calahuti. And Bruce, Bruno Crispo will talk, uh, uh, will talk to you about the opportunities for cybersecurity. Okay, so Bruno, you are welcome to start your, your talk. I cannot share. Okay. You have five minutes. So. Yes, yes, good afternoon. So as uh, Professor Bronzeri says, we decide to uh, extend our offering in cybersecurity from this year. And this is because, as you see in these articles, essentially cyber crime and cyber attacks are uh, on the rise. And there is then an increasing need of uh, cybersecurity skills to counter these attacks. As uh, Forbes says, there are uh, up to three million of unfilled uh, security jobs in the world. And uh, you can see this as a far away, but uh, Actually, this is a, a, a list of uh, companies that uh, contacted me personally last year, and it's not even a complete list, of uh, contacting me because they wanted name of uh, students with the security background because they were hiring people in that uh, domain. So there is a high demand uh, uh, of uh, cybersecurity skills. Now, if you look at the market, you see that there are uh, companies search for two different profiles. Security, the profile manager. So the one where uh, you are going to do the security manager, the security consultant, product manager, chief security officer. So people that have a technological strong background combined with the non-technological skills, interpersonal uh, communication skills, uh, business oriented skills, that it's uh, uh, what they need. And then the other profile companies uh, seek for are the technical background. And this is because cybersecurity, it's a highly vertical field. So at the end, there are not many people understanding the technology behind cybersecurity. So they look for people that are able to do the security architect, security analyst, also working the research and development department of uh, industry, as well as doing research in the, in the university. Now to match these two uh, uh, profiles, 
That's why we have actually uh, now doubled the offering. There is the ICT innovation as uh, the, the curriculum, the security curricula under ICT innovation that we are running for several years now, where there is a technical major and then uh, these uh, um, courses that are more business and economic oriented, where you get those skills to complement the technical one. And this offering, uh, it's unique in, in Italy, in the sense that you don't find that other university providing a similar curricula. And then, and so if, if you feel yourself in a few years, want to do the manager or the security manager, that is probably the choice for you. And this year we have also a curricula, security curricula under the science technology, so a more technical oriented curricula, where you can choose at the end up to 100 book credits on cybersecurity courses, where for cybersecurity courses, I mean courses like this one in blue. And what is important to say here is that it's true, this is a more traditional one, so you can find that other university providing similar curricula, but what I claim here is uh, uh, also according to what uh, Professor Melgani says, said, is that uh, there are few other universities in Italy that can afford, uh, like we do here, uh, to have professor teaching this uh, master without reading a textbook. And this because many of the professors here teaching this uh, uh, major do security research uh, uh, as a research activity. So this results uh, typically in having uh, courses with topics that are up to date, with uh, giving you insight that is difficult to get from a professor that teach security simply because they read a, a security textbook. Uh, I don't have uh, more time, I think, so I don't go on the technical details and uh, of the, the courses. And if people are interested to pursue this uh, uh, path, this uh, educational path, they can contact me and we can have more informative and detailed discussion about courses as well as uh, the study study plan. And uh, that's my five minutes slot, I think. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Bruno. And uh, now is, is the turn of uh, Professor Marco Calauti, who teaches uh, the mandatory course Computability and Computational Complexity at the uh, Curriculum in Science and Technology, and is, is, and is also the uh, coordinator of the area on data science. Please, Marco. Right, I hope you can see uh, my screen. Right. Okay. Right. So thank you uh, and welcome. Um, so uh, let me start uh, with uh, with this simple slide. Uh, um, I think we we all agree that nowadays uh, data never sleeps. And to give you an idea, just in 2020 and just in a single minute of the day, uh, very large very large amounts of data have been produced, and also at an extremely high pace. Uh, and this happens in a great variety of contexts. For example, uh, we had uh, four, uh, 500 hours of videos uploaded on YouTube and more than 300,000 posts submitted uh, to Instagram in just one minute of the day. So uh, it's in this, in this context that one starts hearing about uh, data science. But then what is essentially data science? Well, it is the discipline that aims at extracting knowledge from all this kind of data and exploit this knowledge to give users uh, useful insights. So as you might imagine, this is a very ambitious goal and to reach it, we need to understand and properly combine a wide variety of methodologies coming from different fields. And that's why we can depict uh, a data science like this. For example, we need to know about data management. We need to know about statistics, uh, machine learning, knowledge representation and reasoning and so on. And this uh, multidisciplinary aspect of data science uh, has to do with the fact that well, we are dealing with data that is so-called uh, big data, which contrary to common belief does not mean we have uh, on, does not only mean that we have to deal with a lot of data, but it actually means that we have to deal with at least uh, four key aspects of data that we usually call the four V's of big data. So we have to deal with very large quantities of data and this aspect is called volume. But this data is also produced at very high speed. And this aspect is known as velocity. 
These data are also coming from many heterogeneous sources, as you can see in the picture on the left. And this aspect is known as variety. For example, uh, we, you can see that we have different kinds of data that comes in the form of uh, uh, videos, photos, uh, free text, and, uh, and so on. Okay. And finally, uh, not all the sources from which we gather our data should be trusted in the same way, both in terms of quality and completeness of the data they provide. And this last aspect is called veracity. For example, uh, a user post on Facebook about a certain topic might not be as trustful as an article on an online newspaper on the same topic. So it's clear that in order to become a good data scientist, one has to acquire and master a wide spectrum of methodologies and tools. Uh, so in order to deal with all these aspects, no? And this is what our curricula in data science aim to provide. So our master in computer science essentially provides uh, two curricula, as Erika was saying, the information science and technologies one and the ICT innovation curriculum. Uh, both curricula have a track dedicated to data science. Uh, in, the, in the first one, you will be able to attend uh, uh, data science courses among the ones you see on the right that are in blue, such as machine and deep learning, uh, knowledge data integration, and many other courses. While uh, the, there will be also a focus uh, with some remaining credits on other aspects of computer science, including uh, its theoretical foundations and courses related to communication and electronics. On the other hand, the, the ICT innovation curriculum provides 90 credits in data science via the courses in blue that you can see on the right, but also an additional 30 credits uh, that are focused on innovation and inter entrepreneurship studies. So in which you will learn essentially how to structure your business ideas and how to make them successful. So I would say that the second curriculum provides uh, a dedicated set of courses that emphasize the business side of things while uh, the first curriculum provides uh, a broader point of view uh, on computer science topics. So to give an example, uh, and let me conclude with this, uh, in the first curriculum, uh, I teach a mandatory foundational course called the Computability and Computational Complexity. And uh, what is this course about? The course essentially, in a nutshell, uh, lies down the mathematical foundations of modern computer science by studying the limits of computation. So in this course, essentially, we ask ourselves and also try to answer questions like, uh, can this problem be solved by an algorithm? And if yes, how expensive it is to solve it? And you might be surprised by, surprised by how many problems actually exist that even computers cannot solve. And these are pervasive to many different fields. For example, in security, verifying if a given program will ever execute a malicious instruction, or in games, where you want to understand if you can win a match in Magic the Gathering, and there are many others. So I believe these are important tools that provide a good contribution to the skills of a great computer scientist, if you are interested in it. And I think this concludes uh, uh, my slot. If you have any other questions, I will be uh, very happy to answer your questions. So thank you very much, Enrico, Bruno, and uh, Marco. We have, I think, seven minutes for, for questions. Since I don't see any question in the QA box, uh, I would start with some questions uh, which were, let's say, um, sent to us before the before this event. And I would give the word actually to uh, to Monica because there are several questions which are related to uh, to the call. So uh, the call not only for this master degree but also for the for the other two master degrees. So Monica, if you can spend a few time uh, um, clarifying, so which, are, which is the, the process, which is the timing, and so on and so forth. Yes. Okay. Um, well, actually, in order to um, as apply for the admission to each of the three masters available at the department, uh, all the candidates must submit an application online. Uh, on each... Uh, um, Master Degree Program website, you can find the call with all the documents you have to upload in your application online, uh, so as all the information regarding the selection uh, process. Each Master Degree has a limited number of positions available for students uh, with uh, non-EU citizenship, Italian citizenship, European citizenship, or for students that hold an EU citizenship, but they have residence in Italy. 
At the moment, the call for students uh, living outside of Italy uh, and uh, that hold the non-European citizenship is closed, whereas it is open the call for Italians, European and non-EU citizens living in Italy. When you submit, uh, uh, once you have submitted your, uh, your application, um, the selection process uh, will start only after the deadline of the application uh, of the application submission, which is mid of June for two of the master degree and one is at the end of June. Okay, usually it takes one month for the. Um, Usually the com the committee takes one month to um, publish the ranking list of the admitted candidates, and um, then all the admitted candidates have normally seven days to accept the given position. If they do not accept it, uh, our office will uh, admit the next eligible ca uh, candidate in the ranking list. Uh, don't worry, because before we decide to go on and with the with acceptances, uh, we have we call and we contact all the students that are admitted. Um, in order to accept the given position, all students are required to pay uh, not refundable fees of one hundred euro. This way, you uh, keep your uh, your place and even if you are not graduate or you still have to satisfy fulfill the English requirement you have time to do it but you uh, have your place and you won't lose your place uh, your in, in the study program you're interested in you can apply for more than one study program but then when you're requested to accept the position you have to decide which one you want to enroll in Enrollments usually takes place in September. Obviously, before the enrollment, you need to have all the requirements, which means the bachelor degree, you have to uh, hold already your bachelor degree and the English requirement. To uh, satisfy, to fulfill these two requirements, you have time until the 31st of October, 2022. Okay, these are the main information. Thank you very much, Monica. It seems that we have a question regarding the validity of the B2, the English B2 certificate. Yes. I have a first certificate B2 that I acquired in 2018. Is valid for applying? Yes. The first certificate is valid for five years. Okay. Do we have? Probably another question uh, is about um, for the uh, extra EU uh, call. So when the results will be released? Do you have an idea when they will be released? Uh, this afternoon or at the least tomorrow morning. Okay, very good. What document should I present if I graduate at the end of July? That is after the deadline of the full application. Okay, if you are enrolled in an Italian uh, um, university, you have to upload a self certificate, uh, including all the courses you have already passed with so the exam, grade, credits, and uh, scientific sectors of the courses you have passed, but also those that you still have to take. I mean, you have to add the list of exams that you still have to take, including credits and scientific sectors. Okay, very good. Thanks, Monica. So it seems You're that welcome. we don't have any more uh, questions. So we may, uh, no, there is a question. We have one minute. So if I have a bachelor degree in other engineering majors, uh, not computer science, that I still apply to the program. This is not for me. Yeah, so I may answer. So uh, it depends on which kind of, uh, of bachelor degree you have. So if it is related to ICT, you can apply uh, automatically. If it is not uh, inherent, so to ICT, in that case, so you have we have to check so how many credits you have earned from your uh, bachelor degree, and uh, if uh, this number of credits is sufficient in order to pass to uh, to one of our degrees. So please. For this, make a reference to the call. So if you read uh, carefully the call, you will find all this information. 
Okay, so it seems that we are in time for moving to the next session. The next session is about the master's degree in information and communications engineering, and it will be headed by uh, my colleagues, of course, Nicola Concha. Hello, good afternoon, everybody. So let me start with the presentation. Right, so uh, I'm Nicola Concha, I'm the uh, coordinator of this master's degree in information and communication engineering. And uh, so just a, a very short history about uh, the program. It was initially born as a telecommunication engineering degree, and uh, it dates back like uh, about uh, 20 years uh, ago. And uh, throughout the years, we actually went through a uh, progressive uh, renovation of the offer. And uh, this was driven by the market on the one hand, but also to the research direction and also uh, on the territory in which uh, uh, we are we are based. So talking with companies and talking with the stakeholders that are um, indeed interested in uh, in uh, in hiring our our students. And uh, so the um, well, the objective of the degree it's uh, pretty straightforward, I would say, in the sense that uh, our goal is to train engineers and uh, provide them with the uh, skills that are. Uh, spanning from signal processing uh, to communications uh, and uh, networking. And today we have like uh, two uh, colleagues uh, that will exactly discuss about these uh, issues, especially related to the signal processing and the networking. And uh, in here, what we also want to, to give our students uh, is the ability of uh, uh, managing uh, innovation. And so this means not only knowing uh, uh, the technologies that are, let's say, relevant. Uh, in the field, but also uh, try to um, provide uh, uh, new hints and uh, new solution, innovative solutions uh, uh, to solve new and upcoming problems. So in terms of, of the tracks and how the program is arranged, we have three main uh, areas uh, where you can, that you can uh, choose. And the first one is about the signal processing and understanding. As uh, uh, the name suggests, uh, the goal here is to focus uh, mostly on, um, on the analysis of signals. Uh, so uh, I try to understand, to, to capture the signals from different sort of devices and be able to interpret them uh, the, the meaning, so the, the amount of information which is actually contained uh, inside uh, inside those signals. Uh, and in here we have like uh, different courses like uh, multimedia data security, radar and radio localization, and computer vision, uh, advanced remote sensing. Uh, we have also a course on imaging and diagnostics uh, that are, um, let's say, um, mixed with the mandatory courses uh, that are common for all uh, the, the different tracks, which are the digital signal processing course, recognition systems, uh, uh, an advanced course on, on networking, and uh, an innovation and business and ICT uh, course. Um, the two other branches are the one on wireless networking. In here, instead of looking at the signals and so on, the data, we tend to look at the systems on uh, all the architecture of how the different systems are made up. And this includes uh, radar, communication systems, mobile satellite communications, uh, again, another course on networking, and also something related to simulation and performance evaluation. Uh, we have also, uh, similar to what was proposed in the computer science uh, um, uh, degree, uh, a branch which is uh, uh, for ICT innovation, uh, where in here instead the idea is to provide the students uh, with competencies that go beyond the technical ones, uh, but also say uh, go move towards uh, the development of new uh, entrepreneurial uh, um, activities. Uh, the, the path is then completed with three elective courses uh, and the thesis and internship, uh, which is of 27 credits overall. So uh, in, in, uh, in our degree, uh, we tend to uh, promote uh, uh, the teaching uh, and the research uh, as a blended uh, uh, as a blended topic in a way that students uh, can work uh, uh, as students, uh, but also practice uh, on uh, research uh, items. Uh, and so in here, you can see briefly all the different areas that are involved uh, in, a, in, a, in the course and the different labs uh, in which uh, uh, we as uh, teachers, we are as professors, we are involved. Uh, and so here you can see just a few areas uh, uh, spanning from computer vision, image processing, recognition. Uh, uh, we have a, a lab for digital forensics, uh, and then we have the, the aerospace and remote sensing uh, uh, area, and then we have the networking, uh, um, and also, oops, sorry about that, um, the ultrasound lab, 
and uh, these uh, opens, let's say, uh, your future to a, a, a large uh, uh, set of potential jobs in which you can uh, be hired. And these, is, these are just some of the, the areas where our previous students uh, uh, have, found, um, have found a job. But just a, a quick uh, highlight, a few highlights uh, about uh, the quality of, of the degree. Uh, we are, let's say, quite international as, uh, as, as degree. We have a lot of uh, students incoming and outgoing in terms of uh, uh, mobility and double degrees. Uh, and uh, we also, so one of the highlights is that our, all our students, uh, as for also the other degrees, uh, are uh, all employed. Uh, they usually find a, a job, let's say, within uh, one year, but definitely after, after three years. So um, we are also involved in the, in the IT, which is the European Institute of Technology, but for this we will talk uh, about it uh, in, in a second. So this concludes my presentation. I would like to leave the floor to the two colleagues, uh, uh, Professor Granelli and Professor Lorenzo Bruzzone, for their presentation. Let me stop the sharing. Fabrizio. You want to start? Yes, just a second. Okay, let me see. Do you see the screen? Yes. Great. So, uh, thank you, uh, Nicola, for the introduction. Um, here I will uh, spend uh, five minutes uh, speaking about uh, the networking uh, courses that we have. So I'm Fabrizio Veranelli and uh, most of the courses uh, are covered either by myself or by my colleague uh, Paolo Casari. And uh, in general uh, we say that we cover next generation networks, uh, uh, both from research as well as also education point of view. So. Um, ne next generation networks uh, have uh, quite an interesting uh, feature today because uh, um, they represent somehow the engine of modern society because as you saw also in previous presentations uh, uh, data today and information uh, are, uh, represent the big of the society and of course uh, to get access to data is what is the purpose of, of networks, be them wireless or wired. Uh, so what do we do? Uh, mostly we cover this uh, generic uh, goal that is the network meets the cloud, because today only transmitting information is not anymore enough, but the networks are expected to provide uh, advanced services uh, and adaptability to different scenarios. Uh, since uh, in the last uh, five, ten years, uh, the Internet became uh, practically the only uh, technology that is being used for transmitting information. And for this reason, uh, this modified the way the Internet is working in order to be capable of supporting uh, different applications. In this figure, you can see some of the more interesting technologies that uh, we, are, uh, we are analyzing and we are working on today. So uh, we have some uh, activities and courses uh, on uh, network design and software defined networking that represents uh, uh, a, um, a feature that uh, allows next generation networks to be flexible. And uh, especially this leads us to the capability that is in 5G and uh, 6G cellular systems to support uh, different applications such as uh, smart city and smart grid, uh, but also Internet of Things and machine to machine communications. And um, in this framework, uh, a lot of the technologies that were, uh, first of all, uh, within the cloud are being extended in order to enable the integration of the network. So today we don't have uh, any more the cloud uh, and the data centers uh, as separate entities from the network, but uh, both technologies are uh, somehow interacting with each other. And one of the more interesting examples is uh, the one that you see here on the bottom right, which is the mobile edge cloud or the concept of fog computing, where 
we don't have anymore a single centralized cloud, but the capability to deploy services within the network, and especially at the edge of the network, more near to the end users. This is done for several applications like uh, uh, self-driving cars, uh, Internet of Things, uh, uh, low latency communications. Uh, so what, what we study in, the, in our networking courses is how to put everything together and how to address the requirements uh, of these next generation uh, applications by using modern networking technologies. Um, so just a few words about uh, some uh, specific areas that we cover. One of the biggest area in research, but also in training uh, that we cover is 5G and then 6G networking and beyond, because uh, today 5G is the first example of uh, a modern network where uh, softwareization and virtualization allow to build a, a really a next generation networking concept uh, capable of supporting uh, most of the applications that are required today, like uh, ultra reliable low latency communication, massive uh, uh, IoT, enhanced mobile broadband. And uh, the reason we study this is because we want to understand and to teach the technologies that are behind those, te those solutions, but also to understand where they can lead in the near future. So uh, this leads us to the concept of softwareization, but also automation of the network. And uh, this leads to open challenges in how to make the network self-aware and capable of optimizing itself. That is something that brings us also to the area of introducing uh, intelligence within the network. On the other side, we are also uh, targeting uh, modern uh, deployment scenarios of networks. Uh, and on this, uh, we have uh, uh, several activities that are related to aerial platforms, such as drones uh, or low orbit satellites, uh, where we work with uh, the problem of uh, what, what the, they are called 3D networks. Uh, so adding uh, a dimension to the geography of the network that is not uh, as simple as it seems because uh, today we have a lot of uh, transmitting devices like uh, UAVs, drones, uh, balloons, uh, but there are no specific standards. So this opens the floor for a lot of research activities, for example, to integrate UAV in 5G, how to deploy services using these such aerial platforms, how to have a reliable networking. And finally, last but not least also, how we can have an energy aware solution because uh, increasing the complexity of networks might increase uh, severely the cost in terms of power consumption. And this leads, needs to be addressed uh, at the design level as well as also uh, and the optimization uh, level. Uh, finally, we have uh, activities uh, on uh, new technologies, also in layer in the physical layer, such as uh, millimeter wave communications, uh, where we um, where we target very high data rate and also the capability to have indoor precise uh, location of the users, as well as uh, underwater uh, acoustic communications. So we have uh, specific facilities in our labs uh, to experiment uh, with both technologies. Uh, these latest two millimeter waves uh, and uh, underwater communications are more uh, followed by my colleague uh, uh, Paolo Casari, while I'm following mostly the line on 5G, 6G and drones communications. So all those things uh, become subject of potential thesis activities, but also projects that we have in a lot of our courses, as well as specific didactical uh, and, if you want, theoretical and applied concepts uh, that we include uh, in our common uh, didactical activities. So with this, uh, I think I can uh, close my presentation and leave the floor uh, uh, to my colleague uh, Lorenzo and then to questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Fabrizio. Let's move to Professor Bruzzone. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. I'll briefly present you some of the activities that we are doing in the part which is connected with signal processing and understanding. 
In particular, given the limited time, I'll focus on some technologies that are connected with sensing and remote sensing and the related intelligence signal processing. Just a, a quick uh, overview on what we are doing. We are developing uh, technologies and we develop education on this technology related uh, to the sensor, the sensing, the signal processing and the intelligent integration of different sensors for addressing complex uh, application scenarios. These scenarios uh, are many, a range from uh, what you can do in automotive, for example, using sensor for autonomous driving, or what you can do in indoor system uh, with the high level of automatization by exploiting the sensor and uh, the processing for taking decision and controlling an environment. But then the scenario can be much more complex where you integrate uh, this kind of technologies in satellites, in drones, in airplanes, in situ sensor, for considering a complex system for addressing many different possible applications. So this requires to develop technologies in different direction and education in different direction. We uh, offer courses on radar and uh, on basic radar technology, but also on advanced technologies uh, that are related, for example, to the radar that you can use in automotive or in, in robots. We uh, look at technologies in which radar are used for uh, meteorological forecast, for ground penetrating, for imaging, for specific applications. But we develop also courses where the sensing technologies are associated uh, with the capability to have uh, sensing in different contexts, from in situ sensing to proximal sensing, remote sensing. And this means uh, to develop technologies that are based on passive sensor, on complex uh, uh, system instruments that can measure spectral signature with high level of details. We develop, uh, uh, let's say, activity connected with the laser and laser scanning for modeling the complexity of the object with very high precision. And then having a, a huge amount of information that can be used in many different scenarios. Everything we do here is supported by a lot of activity in laboratory. We have new laboratories with many radar, many LIDAR, many uh, camera, hyperspectral sensor, thermal camera, multispectral sensor. And so we develop projects and you can put your hand on this kind of, uh, of activity. One element which is crucial is uh, related to the platform for performing measurements. Also here we provide uh, education and uh, this range from the terrestrial platform robots that carry sensor to uh, satellite technology, very, very complex, but essential, and UAV and drones that were commented also before by my colleague. Here we have, again, uh, the capability to integrate uh, uh, different kind in our laboratory of sensor on complex drones for performing measurements uh, in complex environments. A pillar of our activity is uh, signal processing and artificial intelligence. And this is uh, the, the key tool in order to take measurements of many different possible sensors in different conditions in order to be able then uh, to develop the, the application. And so this means uh, having the capability to take measurements, to integrate and to take a decision in an automatic way. For example, integrating uh, uh, different kind of data acquired by different platform in order to address uh, complex scenarios. This is something which is very pervasive. I mean, this is important nowadays in uh, robotics, in uh, uh, biomedical diagnostic, in autonomous driving, in environmental monitoring. So what we see is uh, uh, very general in terms then of the many application domains that can be addressed. Well, just a, a couple of uh, uh, comments on some of the main activities that we develop uh, in uh, our department uh, and that uh, find a lot of space in the courses and then in the project and the master thesis. Uh, we work a lot on Earth observation, which means using all these kind of technologies from satellite to drone to in situ sensing in order to be able to address uh, applications that are connected with, uh, for example, environmental monitoring, agriculture. Uh, we work a lot on surveillance and, and monitoring of infrastructure, civil protection, climate change, there is a huge uh, amount of activity that are related now to the space economy that are growing thanks uh, to the evolution in the satellite technology. 
We can use the satellite for uh, managing the irrigation field by field and optimizing the irrigation for supporting what is uh, related then uh, to uh, damage assessment uh, after, for example, earthquakes, but there are a huge number of applications. And then there is also the possibility to work uh, on the most sophisticated uh, activity that can be done when you work with instruments and data processing, which is uh, related to planetary exploration. We have part of courses that uh, focus on the design of space mission, on how designing the orbits of satellites, what are the constraints, what are the, the, the essential uh, uh, parts related to the design of the ground segment, the telecommunication system, and this is done also in practice because uh, in our department, uh, we have the responsibility of two instruments on two mission of European Space Agency, one for Jupiter, one for Venus. And we will start in the summer to have the ground segment for controlling our instruments at our facilities. And so for the students, it would be possible to develop uh, uh, master thesis and to look at the behavior of this kind of system uh, in a context which is an operative context. Okay, these are just examples of uh, what we are doing in, uh, in this part. Of course, if you have uh, any question, I'm happy to, to answer. So thank you very much, Nicola, Fabrizio, and, uh, and Lorenzo. Uh, there are, I think, in total three plus two questions, but uh, now we are out of time. So what I would propose is to postpone the answering to these questions at the end of, of the event. Okay, so we have 15 minutes for QAs. Let's, uh, let's answer at the end of so now I would uh, leave the floor to, uh, to the third slot, which is about the master degree in artificial intelligence systems. And this will be presented by uh, Luigi, Professor Luigi Palopoli. Thank you, Farid. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, excellent. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, so uh, let me just start uh, by saying uh, uh, what is artificial intelligence. This is a kind of standard definition. Uh, clearly, an artificial intelligence is a system able somehow to replicate and perform tasks that are normally reserved to humans, such as visual perception, speech recognition, decision making, and translation between languages. This is the standard definition. And uh, uh, artificial intelligence is a long story. Uh, it's first, uh, uh, the introduction of the idea of artificial intelligence dates back to the early times of computer science back in the 1950s. And then there were uh, a sequence of uh, uh, waves, we could, we could say, because for instance, in the 80s, uh, they invented a, a new mathematics, such, which is the one that underlies uh, the current uh, uh, neural network, uh, logical systems, etc. Uh, and then uh, um, the environment became, became quiet again until uh, the, the mid of the first decade of, the, uh, of this century in which a new um, generation of devices like the iPhone uh, and, uh, and the, the web made uh, it possible to uh, conceive and develop uh, completely new and disruptive uh, applications. And now we are uh, in the 20s and, and we are faced <laughs> with the big question of what's going to come next and it will very much depend on us. It's no surprise that within this long story that you can find a lot of uh, uh, universities where uh, it's possible to uh, learn uh, um, to, 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 to take a master course somehow related to artificial intelligence, both in Italy, in Europe, and outside. Uh, so what's specific about our course? Let me just introduce uh, another concept. Uh, the really new revolutionary uh, presence of these years is the uh, onset of uh, uh, artificial intelligence systems, which are systems based on artificial intelligence. We have seen a few examples in the talk uh, before, uh, autonomous driving, uh, AI-based uh, diagnosis and therapy, conversational agents, uh, social robots. We can name uh, uh, quite a few of these things. They are no longer pieces of science fiction, but are uh, really technologies, real technologies available out there for us to use. And uh, uh, the economic impact of this revolution uh, is, is very difficult uh, to assess. 
The latest uh, uh, estimate that I read uh, speaks about $50 billion um, target in the market uh, related to artificial intelligence by next year. And uh, uh, the, 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 the thing that is now becoming clearer and clearer is that in the midterm, you know, uh, artificial intelligence will not be a job killer, uh, but it will be a job creator. I mean, the number of jobs that will become out of date will be replaced by uh, an exceeding number of jobs that are uh, at the moment not covered. So it's a, it's a really new uh, and exciting field to start a career. Uh, so artificial intelligence systems have uh, four different dimensions. So the first one is the classical dimensions like machine learning, perception and control, etc., uh, which is somehow covered in standard uh, uh, courses of uh, artificial intelligence. Then we have uh, got a few uh, other courses like uh, um, communication, interaction, uh, uh, affect and social skills that are uh, actually weekly core covered in uh, standard artificial intelligence courses. And then there is a whole lot of new courses, like of new topics like uh, behavior and ethics, uh, AI-based innovation, etc. cetera, that are not covered at all in uh, other courses, okay? So uh, our take, when we, uh, we, we should say that we, we had the luck to start uh, building this course from the ground up, and our take was that we needed four important pillars in order to create this, this building of artificial intelligence. One is the brain science to understand what is uh, artificial intelligence. The other one is machine learning and automated reasoning, which is how, how we can make computer intelligence. Then there is system engineering. How can, can we make systems? out of these new concepts. And this is something that is desperately needed because it's a, it's a kind of competency which is not available out there. And then what is uh, what we are allowed to do and what we should not do and what we should never do, which is ethical and legal implications. Okay, and as I said, uh, our take was to, uh, our luck was to be able to design this course from the grounds up so we could really select these uh, uh, fundamental elements of information as the um, underpinning of our, of our course. And we have developed uh, all our, uh, our curriculum out of them. Okay, now uh, this idea is reflected in how the course is organized. Uh, first, we have a first group of mandatory activities, which provides the basics of all uh, artificial intelligence systems. Then we have a few in-depth courses. You, you can choose uh, two courses out of uh, six, uh, six uh, in which you, you, you go deep down in some of the aspects of, uh, uh, that are needed by specific uh, categories of applications. And then we have uh, the specialization. We have uh, got uh, several specialization. One is intelligent robots. I will not waste words on this because there is going to be a specific uh, talk right next. Then there is computer vision uh, specialization in which we learn uh, the fundamental of computer vision. And uh, then we have uh, generic methodologies uh, specialization in which uh, you uh, want a kind of uh, open and uh, broad-minded uh, approach to artificial intelligence. So you don't want to commit to a specific uh, application direction and, and therefore uh, your courses will be full with, uh, with the other uh, in-depth uh, courses. Importantly, we have got uh, another path, which is AI and innovation, which is how, uh, studying how to make AI, the engine of uh, innovation for future entrepreneurship. And then we have a course, uh, uh, sorry, a specialization, which is called the systems, in which uh, uh, you will see uh, several types of systems, in part uh, related also to sensing and radar technologies that we have uh, uh, already seen in the, in, the, in the previous talk. Finally, we have got a, a completely different specialization, which is neurocognitive architectures, but I will not uh, say much on this because, uh, because there is going to be 
uh, uh, a talk right next. Uh, let me just uh, uh, complete saying three fundamental, um, how to say, uh, points that I would like uh, uh, you to take away. Number one, we have created this course from the grounds up. Nothing existed. We, did, we didn't have to recycle anything. So we invented exactly what is needed to match the need of the current market. Okay, number one. Number two, all of these courses have a strong laboratory component that will uh, put you in real contact uh, with, the, with the application. And number three, the type of uh, competencies that you will have in, in the teachers is of the highest uh, standard, as you can, uh, as you, uh, can uh, see. Uh, we have recently been admitted in a group of uh, top universities in Italy who work in the area of artificial intelligence. OK, and I would leave the ground to the next uh, speaker uh, with testimonial, <laughs> who will be Andrea Del Prete, Professor Andrea Del Prete, I, I guess. So Andrea, you can take the floor. Thanks, Luigi. Let me share the screen. Can you hear me and can you see the slides? Yes, yes, please continue. Okay, so uh, in the next five minutes, I'll try to present you this, uh, one of these specialization paths uh, of the AIS master degree, which is called Intelligent Robots. So robots have come a long way since their early days in the 60s, where they were uh, machines that looks more or less like, like that. They were uh, heavy and dangerous machines that were mainly used in assembly lines, like this one at the General Motor uh, factory floor. And they were used for uh, doing repetitive and, and dull tasks. Uh, kept uh, very far away from any human beings because they were extremely dangerous. Uh, nowadays, luckily, robots uh, no longer look like that. They look more like, like this. this is, these are a couple of videos from 2020, so a couple of years ago. So on the top right, you can see a robotic hand, uh, which thanks to reinforcement learning has learned in simulation, how to solve a, a, a cubic, uh, a rubric cube. And then the, what has been learned in simulation has been transferred on a real system. And on the top, on the bottom left, you can see instead a, a bipedal robot that has learned uh, how to walk autonomously. So as you can see in both these applications, apart from having much more advanced uh, hardware machines, we also have the combination of uh, artificial intelligence with robotics that has allowed really to, to exploit the full potential of these machines. And uh, when you think about the combination of robotics and AI, actually the, the, the amount of potential application it becomes quite huge. Uh, you can think of uh, robots uh, for performing surgeries, uh, you can see of, of robots for uh, factory floors, but that, that can collaborate physically, interacting with uh, with humans. In this, this case, they're called cobots. Uh, you can you can think of robots in a, a retail that help customer find uh, products inside the supermarket, or you can see also application for uh, prosthesis. So more in detail about this uh, specialization, uh, intelligent robots. This is uh, composed of three uh, courses, uh, one on, on perception, one on planning, and one on uh, control, which are the three main areas uh, that typically build up uh, rob the robotics field. So the course on perception, which will be uh, given by Professor Fontanelli, will focus on uh, uh, distributed algorithms for uh, uh, making robots perceive their environment, which is one co fundamental component of any robotic system. Uh, for, it, for example, in this video, you can see these two uh, quadcopters that are initialized in two different uh, parts of this common environment. They don't know where they are in the beginning, so they start uh, exploring randomly their environment, collecting uh, data points using a laser scanner and building a map of their environment. And as soon as they observe a part of, of this environment, which is uh, the same as the other robots, they are able to, to fuse the, the two 3D maps that they have previously built to get a, a, a unique map. And this is uh, an example of an algorithm 
that you will be able to, to learn about in this class. Uh, then we have the course on uh, robot planning and its application, which will be uh, given by Professor Paropoli. And here you can see an, an example of application where you have this autonomous walker robot that is able to navigate this environment, which is populated by dynamic obstacles, which are uh, well, people in this example. And it's able to replan uh, online in a dynamic way, uh, a path that is collision free. And at the same time that allows the robot to, to reach uh, its target point. And finally, uh, the course Learning and Optimization for Robot Control, which is given by me. Uh, in this course, you will learn different uh, techniques, some, uh, some of them based on uh, numerical optimization, other based on uh, machine learning algorithms, especially reinforcement learning algorithms for learning how to control a robot. In this video, you can see an, an example in which uh, a reinforcement learning algorithm has been used to teach this uh, uh, robot manipulator how to grasp objects from this uh, box and then toss them inside a, another box or a set of box that is located in, in front of the robot. Okay. So to, re to recap, these are the three courses, perception, planning and control, and the name of the path is intelligence and troubles. So I'll stop here since I'm out of time. Okay, thank you very much, Andrea. Raffaella, you can uh, yes. take the floor. Okay, so let me share the screen. Uh, Sorry, <laughs> show is, is fine. <laughs> no, I just want to. Okay. okay. Can you see the full screen? Sure, sure. Go on. Yes. Okay. Uh, so I am Raffaella Bernardi, and uh, uh, I'm presenting this track of neurocognitive architectures that is uh, offered by DZ in collaboration with uh, the Center for Mind Brain Science, which is based in uh, Rovereto. Uh, um, uh, during this track, uh, the courses and the, the ideas that the, the knowledge that you will be acquiring uh, by attending it are uh, deeply connected with one of the first, uh, the, the pillar that uh, uh, Luigi Palopoli was uh, speaking about, the pillar of what is human intelligence, which is crucial for developing uh, artificial intelligence and is also uh, quite uh, well connected with uh, 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 one of the slides that was uh, shown by Andrea before um, regarding how robots can interact and can be useful uh, for uh, humans, uh, because one of the easiest way for communication for interacting with robots is language. And in fact, with amazing progress have been uh, obtained really kind of a boost uh, and uh, a boom of uh, uh, Oh, sorry, of uh, um, uh, models able to understand and generate natural language uh, um, have been uh, uh, proposed and released. And maybe you have heard about, for instance, the GPT-3 uh, released by OpenAI. And uh, th these are all based uh, um, uh, on machine learning and specifically on uh, deep learning. Uh, so they are uh, transformer models, which are uh, like uh, started to be used in, uh, uh, in our field, in the language processing field in 2018. And since then, these first uh, uh, models, there has been a, a really kind of a, a, a boom of uh, um, uh, new models that have been proposed. And what is uh, uh, amazing is the performance they reach. Uh, so for instance, uh, uh, they have uh, obtained uh, uh, almost perfect uh, um, accuracy performance in the, with sentiment analysis. So understanding the sentiment emotions in text or, or in question answering, like answering questions about whatever topics. Uh, so they, they, there is really this uh, um, uh, line that you see growing uh, together with uh, the introduction of uh, uh, transformer-based models. And also in uh, visual question answering, where a question and uh, um, text and image, text, computer um, NLP, natural language processing, and computer vision are put together. So you have questions about images here as well, like uh, uh, um, 
there is this uh, um, boost in performance. But what we see is that uh, despite this uh, amazing progress uh, and astonishing results, we see that these models, if you carefully analyze them, they can still easily be fooled. So we, I'm sure that all of us, if we read these two sentences, some plants are running a light bulb or a light bulb surrounding some plants, we understand that they are dramatically different and we clearly understand what they would stand for uh, and to what uh, images here they should be associated with as caption describing the images. Whereas these models, they brutally fail. So there is something wrong <laughs> and there is something that we should uh, still do to improve them, to improve them in uh, processing understanding language efficiently as humans do. And so therefore there is a kind of, there is the need of uh, uh, understanding of people like uh, with a strong computer science background who understand all the technology, the machine learning algorithms are on behind uh, uh, these models, but they also understand you know, how human language works. And moreover, uh, these models are big. They are, uh, they have tons of parameters. They're becoming bigger and bigger and they are data anger. They need lots of lots of data to be trained to perform this task on which indeed they uh, really succeed. But maybe if uh, uh, more is learned about how human learn, how human uh, um, acquire knowledge, how human learn some skills, maybe there is the chance of uh, developing models that are also uh, more efficient and maybe less uh, um, uh, smaller than what uh, uh, they are currently and also then uh, they need less data as it should uh, if they are, are mimicking human intelligence. Because of this, what we are offering is a track in which uh, uh, then you, could, you can learn about uh, how human language works, you can learn about how uh, brain works, how how uh, human, which kind of skills uh, human also have uh, uh, at the level of uh, um, which competence they have, and also how we uh, um, combine modalities, language and vision, for instance, and how we use language uh, together in a community. Um, so these are the courses that we offer in this uh, uh, in this track, and moreover, then uh, can of course run do a stage or, and the thesis at the center uh, of mind and brains, uh, which is uh, focusing specialized on the topic uh, listed here. Uh, so if you have further um, questions, you can contact me and also visit the website that I'm posting here. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Luigi, Andrea, and Raffaella. Uh, we are out of time, uh, so we will uh, postpone the, the QAs at the end of the session, at the end of the event. So now I would move to the uh, fourth slot, which is about international mobility opportunities, and in particular, leave the floor to uh, Professor Libertario Demi. Thank you, Farid. Can you hear me and see the slides? Yes. Okay, great. So um, welcome everyone. Uh, this presentation will introduce to the um, uh, programs related to international mobility opportunities and will also uh, point uh, to uh, the, the links through which you can find and eventually more uh, detailed information. So the first program is of course the Erasmus program. And this is a program that will allow uh, the applicants uh, for a study period uh, of one or two semesters abroad. Um, you can include in this period uh, your internship uh, or uh, your master thesis project. And this type of program can be spent uh, within several European partners universities. Uh, you uh, will be supported by a scholarship and uh, applications uh, for this uh, program are open twice uh, a year. To give an idea uh, of the uh, Partners Institute, uh, we are essentially connected to 19 countries. And uh, you can see here uh, a full list, uh, but uh, essentially uh, you're free uh, to select, uh, to select uh, top universities across uh, many uh, European countries. 
Another option um, that expand and extend beyond Europe um, is through the bilateral agreement. Um, and uh, through this program, you can apply for a study period of uh, one semester abroad. Um, in this case, uh, you, uh, you cannot include the internship or the master thesis uh, within this uh, period abroad. And specifically, these agreements are uh, with uh, non-European partner universities. You'll be supported by a scholarship and differently uh, than with the Erasmus program, uh, for this program application is open once a year. And uh, just to put a few examples, we have uh, agreements uh, with Australia, Japan, China, America, and, and South Korean institutes. Then if you aim at specifically uh, completing your internship abroad, then there is indeed a specific uh, program. And uh, with this program, you can spend up to, uh, actually you can start, you can spend from a minimum of two months uh, abroad. In this case, uh, you can spend this period within a research institute, university or company. And uh, there's a small difference uh, if you, um, apply for this program within a European um, institute, university or company, then the minimum duration of the stay is four months. And uh, the host institute uh, differently than before uh, can be defined by the student. So that allows for um, a, a higher level of flexibility in the uh, selection of the host institute. And another very interesting thing for this program is that applications are open uh, monthly. Then similarly, uh, there is a program that is specifically designed for uh, planning your thesis abroad. In this case, you have a period of a minimum uh, of minimum three months to spend abroad uh, within again, uh, either a research institute, university or company that can be defined by the student. And also in this case, uh, applications are open monthly. Then beyond this, uh, we have also uh, other opportunities, and these are within uh, double degree programs. So these are actually joint degrees uh, with two or more universities that then give access to two or more degrees recognized by the respective countries. So these programs are spent, of course, in part at the University of Trento and in part at the uh, partner universities. And in this case, you have a minimum of two semesters uh, to be spent uh, at, the, uh, at the partner university. Here you have some examples of these, um, of these uh, double degree programs. One is with the Central Superlec in France. And um, another um, is possible through uh, the IT uh, network. Uh, and uh, in this case, application should be submitted the year before uh, the enrollment of the master. And um, that's basically it uh, from my side. And um, thank you for the attention. Thank you, Libertario. Since you concluded your presentation with the IIT, I would leave the floor to, uh, to Professor Lanzeri and Professor Conchi to say something about the uh, IIT Digital and the IIT Manufacturing. Would you like to start, Enrico? I do. I start. Yeah, you start. Okay. So very quickly. Um, so as uh, yeah, as it was mentioned, uh, we are partner in the uh, European Institute of Technology, and uh, what we have, what we offer here in this uh, um, in this double degree, it's basically the opportunity to spend uh, one year at the University of Trento and one year in another university. This is usually split uh, into an entry year and next year. So students are, uh, let's say, free to choose uh, on whether they want to do the entry point here or the exit point here. So that opens up to a lot of different uh, uh, opportunities, also in terms of universities, uh, according uh, to the different programs that the students can select. Uh, and um, so what, what, uh, what we offer, let's say, 
in terms of, uh, uh, of programs, what EAT offers in terms of programs uh, are like uh, uh, these uh, seven tracks, uh, autonomous systems, cybersecurity, embedded system, human computer interaction design, cloud and networking, data science, and fintech. So um, well, the cloud and network infrastructures is offered within the degree of information and communication engineering. Uh, the autonomous systems is offered inside the, uh, it's a, in the other department of the industrial engineering, while all the others are instead offered within the computer science, uh, the computer science degree. So um, that's more or less uh, how the, uh, the program works, uh, so you can look uh, at, at all the very fine details about the program uh, at uh, the link of the master school. And as our also Libertario mentioned, uh, uh, we have uh, an application period, uh, so and um, which actually just uh, closed, uh, uh, but uh, you still have time for to enroll uh, in terms of uh, local uh, um, uh, students. Uh, so there is a, what is called the local recruitment, uh, which leaves uh, the opportunity to, to the local students uh, to enroll via, uh, let's say, a, a, different, a different path. So this was mostly for, uh, let's say, the general uh, deadline. But if you are within the, uh, say, uh, University of Trento, uh, there is a chance of enrolling uh, also using the, this uh, um, local recruitment. Uh. So this concludes my presentation on VAT. So uh, I will leave the floor to Enrico. Thank you. Um, thank you, Nicola. So uh, the EAT ma Digital Master has been uh, established since a long time. And uh, I'm, I'm here to presenting uh, another opportunity that is uh, a, new, a new thing that is uh, the involvement in EAT manufacturing that is a different uh, uh, so-called kick of EAT. So in this case, the focus is on manufacturing and the vision is uh, uh, to uh, try to boost the uh, leadership of uh, Europe in terms of, uh, of manufacturing, putting together the needs of manufacturing and also the need to, um, uh, to educate people that are, are able to innovate and, 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 and have an, an entrepreneurship uh, attitude. Uh, so, uh, in this perspective, there is the um, master school of manufacturing, uh, and again, the idea is uh, is always the one of uh, boosting innovation entrepreneurship. And uh, uh, in, now, the master school in, in manufacturing has a five double degree, and we are involved in one that is data science and AI and AI for competitive ma manufacturing. Uh, the structure is somehow similar of the master of the IT uh, digital uh, in terms of uh, credits and, uh, um, and, and, and the advantage are uh, the fact that, that the students is involved in two different university and also in a, uh, in a stimulating environment in terms of, in, uh, of innovation. And uh, uh, these are now the destination that we, uh, we, we offered. So, the, the application are closed, but this is something that you can do for the uh, for the next year. So it's possible to uh, spend one year in Dublin, Lugano, or Nantes, and then come here for the second year in Trento. And these are the snapshot of the uh, of the manifesto in competitive manufacturing that we found we that you will found uh, you, that you will find in the future in the. Uh, in the offer of the university. This is the first year that is not connected to EIT, but the second year is the one in which uh, uh, the people of EIT manufacturing will, uh, will attend. Okay, so this, uh, I think it's all for today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Nicola and Enrico. So with this, we have uh, finished with uh, the presentations. We have around uh, 10 minutes for the questions. Uh, we have skipped some questions before, actually. So some of them were uh, for uh, Nicola. So they were about the master degree in information communications engineering. Yes. One is um, why One, is the information uh, communication engineering elective courses? It's impossible to select the courses of the system path uh, of artificial intelligence systems. 
Well, in, indeed, uh, so the, the, the elective courses that you can uh, select uh, in the program are actually elective, uh, so you can freely choose uh, whatever you want. Uh, so in our, uh, in, in the study, so in, in the manifesto, what we provide, it's a selection of, of courses, uh, but in principle, you're actually free to choose uh, also courses that are coming from, from different degrees. Uh, so that's... Uh, um, so it's actually possible. So if you feel like you would like to take these courses, uh, you can. Okay, good. Uh, another question still for you, Nicola, uh, which is about the, uh, the new master degree. Because yes, someone so is, is asking uh, about the, the bachelor degree in, uh, in uh, computer, uh, uh, computer electronic and uh, communication engineering. So how uh, if there will be a master degree more or less similar to, to this bachelor degree or not in the, in the future. Yeah, so we are actually working uh, on a definition of new, of new master program, uh, which will be more in line with the, with the, with the bachelor degree. Uh, however, this won't be available until uh, the next academic year. So meaning it won't be like uh, 22, 23, but it will start hopefully 23, 24. Okay, last question uh, for you. Uh, and of course, if you want to have additional details about that, uh, of course, informal, because uh, the program hasn't been formalized yet, uh, you feel free to ask and I will try to provide you the information that I can provide. Okay, probably the last question for you, Nicola, but it's about what uh, you said before, uh, actually you together with uh, with Libertario, it's about uh, um, in which university it's possible to, to go for the double degree uh, in AI or information communication engineering. And is it yes. possible to go there in the second year? Yes, as far as the, the degree in uh, information communication engineering, uh, uh, you can either work, either do it uh, uh, through EIT. This means that you can do the entry point here. And that's exactly what I was mentioning. So you can do the local recruitment. So spend the, the first year, the first year here through the local recruitment, and then select an exit university. And uh, for the exit university, you need to look up into the website of the master school, where you can find, for for example, the cloud and networking uh, uh, major. What are the the, the different exit uh, universities uh, in which you can uh, go for the second year? Otherwise, we have also other different double degrees. One is uh, with the uh, subcom in, um, in in Tunisia, and uh, uh, there's also the the superlac, uh, the central superlac. Okay. Uh, still another question for you, Nicola. Again, does the okay. EIT Digital Master include a scholarship? Um, somewhat. Luca. It's not like it's not a straightforward answer. Uh, it's uh, um, uh, there is a scholarship, but not for all the students that are accepted. Uh, only for the top ones, there is a limited. Uh, there are just a, a limited number of uh, seats available. Uh, so you will go through the ranking, uh, and once uh, if you ranked in the top uh, students, then there's also a scholarship. There is first the scholarship, then there is the the tuition waiver, and then uh, there is like. Uh, regular enrollment okay so i would leave your breath a little bit nicola and pass to luigi so luigi uh, there are actually two questions which are correlated in the sense that uh, um, the students asked about the, the small overlap between uh, the degree that is the master degree in artificial intelligence systems and the master degree in computer science yeah okay this is a this is clearly let's say that uh, both uh, uh, courses share a common cultural background which is the one that belongs to the, to the, to the type of uh, uh, you know topics that we, we we do here but this being said uh, uh, i think that if you look at the core of the courses so the backbone of the master uh, master courses they are very very um, clearly distinct one, one another, right? Because in, in, one, in, in one of them, you uh, build a specific uh, expertise on systems and especially on artificial intelligence-based systems. In other, you go for a, a broader 
scientific uh, background in computer science uh, and uh, also in, or, or in communication engineering. These mm, clearly uh, there are other courses like the free choice courses for which it's possible and to some extent uh, perfectly acceptable, ac acceptable that you can borrow from, uh, from other courses. So I would say that the, uh, at the end of the day, the overlap is, is quite limited. Okay, good. So Enrico, uh, you booked yourself to answer to one of the questions uh, in the QA box, which is about regarding EIT Digital Master. Would it be possible to attend both the first year and the second one in Trento? So the, the, the short answer is uh, no, because it will not be uh, an EAT digital master without the, uh, the international mobility, uh, but one student without enrolling in AT digital master can uh, actually attend the courses that are offered in ICT innovation in the two years. So if you want to do the same content in just one place, uh, and it's enough to enroll in the ICT innovation uh, curriculum. Um, okay, can I also add something about the differences between, uh, between the, the, um, yeah. the, the degrees and uh, uh, the, um, from the point of view of the master in computer science, yeah, the, 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 the range of what has been, has, has been uh, uh, presented is, is, is wider, uh, but uh, it's also the possibility of, of specialize. So, uh, there is a, uh, I mean, a lot of choices of, 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 uh, of adding a, a specialization you've seen today in cybersecurity and data science, but this is also true for other, as, uh, other, other, other areas as well. So also in, in the master in computer science, it's possible to specialize them and one can choose on which topic wants to specialize. Thank you. Uh, uh, Farid? Yeah. Uh, there were a couple of questions in which I, I have uh, uh, replied in text, but I still would like to add uh, something. Uh, there was a, a person asking me if uh, uh, he or she, be, if I believe that the artificial intelligence system would be a good fit for uh, autonomous driving. And then I say, by all means, yes, because that's, uh, we, we have a, a, a absolutely a all, uh, um, a bunch of courses that could uh, give you a stronger uh, background in this area, uh, but very much clearly depends on the specific interest of the, of the person, because if you are more interested in uh, other aspects like uh, radar for, <laughs> for cars, then in that case, maybe, maybe you, you may wish to make another choice. But if you look for a broad um, set of competencies for autonomous driving, I think that artificial intelligence system is absolutely a good fit. And the other question was when you can choose your, your if you are forced to choose your study plan right away when you enroll, and this is absolutely not the case, you can start taking the courses in the first semester, take your, pick your depth courses, and then based on that, you will, you will decide uh, which uh, uh, course uh, is the most uh, appropriate, which package of courses is the most appropriate for your, for your uh, uh, interest and your plans, right? And then uh, uh, submit your study plan uh, uh, in a second time. Okay, Maybe thank you. If I may jump in quickly, I have just been informed uh, about the opening of a third window for EIT. So uh, also in case you want to do the regular application, uh, it's uh, open until the May 9, right? So in case uh, you're interested in, uh, in pushing like the, instead of going through the local recruitment due to the regular application, you, there's still a window, a third window available until May 9, but it's written on the website that uh, uh, there is a limited number of available study offers uh, and so it will work on a first come first serve basis. Okay, so in case you're interested, uh, look up again on the, on the website so you will find all the necessary information. Okay, uh, for Luigi, uh, one student was asking, uh, I have a master degree in electronic engineering, can I apply for a well, master well, degree well, in artificial well, intelligence systems? Well, yeah, yes, let's say the, the short answer is, uh, <laughs> Almost certainly yes, 
okay? Because when we designed uh, this, this uh, artificial intelligence system, CV, our idea was to facilitate the intake from uh, the widest possible, um, uh, let's say, uh, undergraduate courses, uh, except for a, a few important requirements. And one of them is that you have to, to be in possession of a sufficient uh, background in computer science. So you have got to have at least uh, 12 uh, credits in this area and uh, at least something in uh, uh, some credits, but it's written in the, in the, in the, in the call uh, on physics or uh, science, uh, et cetera, right? So you have to have a, a sort of scientific uh, background with some, uh, with some specific uh, competencies in uh, computer science. We don't ask for much. It's just 12 credits is a customary presence in many undergraduate uh, courses, uh, curriculum also uh, very far away from computer science. In case you don't have, you can take some extra courses in this area, or we can also evaluate the possibility of having uh, um, other courses taken, uh, you know, outside of uh, your uh, your uh, standard uh, path. But most likely, a person in uh, in um, who has uh, got graduate in uh, computer engineering has all the necessary requirements to attend. Uh, fully our, our master course. Okay. For Nicola, uh, Thomas Nonis is asking if possible a bit more information regarding the new master degree. Okay, so well, uh, everything is uh, extremely preliminary in the sense that we haven't gone through the, the formal approval. But uh, as uh, um, it was somewhat anticipated, it's something that uh, will try to match better the, the, the bachelor degree. So it will try to, to bring, uh, to, to have a straight path, let's say, towards uh, the master degree in, uh, in the three areas uh, that characterize the, the each uh, or uh, ICE uh, bachelor degree. And uh, I'm not sure, well, so what, what else can be said? Um, so to this moment, uh, uh, it will be a, a more a, a clear follow up, let's say, of what uh, uh, what we have in the bachelor, uh, with a, a diversity in the offer that covers these three area at least. There is another another interesting question that has come up, right? I don't know if you want to. Okay, sorry, I didn't see. Yeah, how does the twenty four credit thesis work? Is it a research-based work? Is it the internship uh, stage taken together with a thesis as part of it in a 30 credit work or are they about different topics? Maybe this is of general, uh, a general question you can answer yourself, Farid, if you want. Yeah, sure. So uh, in general, uh, but depends because there is a slight difference with respect to uh, artificial intelligence systems and computer science uh, master degrees and the degree on uh, information and communication engineering, but it's a slight different in the credits. In general, so you have uh, 30 credits, uh, which uh, it's a block of 30 credits, which is composed of 24 credits for the thesis, plus six credits for the internship. In the case of the information and communication engineering, it's 21 plus six or so 27 in total. And then obviously, so uh, if you want, you can take the internship alone separately and then move forward with the thesis or agree with uh, with uh, an internal supervisor or even an external supervisor uh, but in co-supervision with someone from the department uh, to uh, to make a unique activity that puts together uh, the internship and the, uh, the thesis work so in general uh, the duration is about six months but obviously this depends very much on the topic. This depends very much on the, the activities and which will be uh, foreseen together with the, uh, with, the, uh, with the supervisor. Another question. Uh, before was mentioned that the EIT Digital Master will start the year next to the application. If I apply it in the third window, when would the plan begin? This is for you, Nicolette. Yes, as a uh, third window should fit uh, within the 22, 23 
uh, so the next uh, the coming uh, uh, September if I'm not wrong uh, Monica correct uh, we can hear you hi uh, can, can you repeat sorry yeah, because uh, it was mentioned that uh, so if uh, one uh, student applies to the third window of the EAT, uh, it could uh, start probably already this September. Yes, yes. Right. It has to start this September. Yeah. Then it depends which is the entry or the exit university. Yes, exactly. If the entry university is Trento, so the first year, year will be here in Trento, it starts in September. Sure. Okay, so if there are Farid, yeah, please. May I give an information about the uh, test we organize for uh, B two English B two? Sure. So the University of Trento organizes these uh, four tests uh, in English B two for all the applicants that uh, want to apply for a master degree in English in uh, in the University of Trento on the web page. Uh, where I described the admission requirements, the, you can find all the information about the four dates and the how to enroll in this test. These tests are free and are open to all the applicants. You do not need to be enrolled in the University of Trento in order to attend the test. And it gives you the opportunity to fulfill uh, the English requirement if you do not uh, have uh, a certificate or if in your university the test was only uh, made of two skills instead of the four that we require. Okay, that's it. Thanks, Monica. Another question, would it be possible to have some information on the type of professional figures formed by the master degree in ICT innovation software and services architectures curriculum? This is for you, uh, I think. So thank you for thank you for the question. So the the idea is uh, to 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 have people that are able to uh, connect the services and uh, um, and software. What and and this means uh, that uh, one can uh, work. In, in organization that provided services that has to be connected, arranged, or orchestrated, and, uh, uh, and also uh, connected to, uh, to, to service uh, on the cloud, for example, and, uh, um, and obviously knowing what is the kind of uh, uh, methodology that are needed for uh, designing these rather complex systems. So uh, the idea is that uh, one become, for example, system analyst or requirement analyst and eventually uh, project manager and, uh, and then can have his career on, uh, on software development. Uh, but the, the part of innovation means also that one has uh, to uh, taking account of the uh, economical and impact, economical impact that this system has. I hope that I gave some some of the answers. Okay, we are I think out of time. So if you have more questions, so please don't hesitate to write us uh, via mail to me or to the secretariat. So we'll try to answer you as soon as possible. So I'd like to, to thank everybody very much. And uh, I hope to, uh, to see uh, the students next year in one of our master degrees in the department. Thanks again. Bye-bye. Thank you, bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye everybody, thank you.